The objective of this lab is to measure the speed of the sound using sonar, which means sonic navigation and ranging. Sonar is the way that submarines manage to figure out what else is in the ocean with them by transmitting sound pulses and then receiving their reflections back off other objects in the ocean. In our case, we are going to use the Firefox app on a smartphone to measure the time delay between a transmitted and reflected sound wave. The way this is going to work is that Firefox will go ahead and transmit a sound pulse at some given time t equals zero. The sound wavefront will then spread out from the phone. Here, the sound wavefront is shown as the black line moving away from the phone, and it's curved because the sound spreads out in all directions. The wave will move across the room and eventually collide with a wall. It will hit that wall and then reflect back. This is basically an echo. The sound wave will come back to the phone, and then the phone is going to use the microphone to detect the signal from the reflected pulse. It will arrive after some time t. The Firefox app will produce data that looks like this. This is a graph that shows amplitude in AU. Here, AU means arbitrary units. And so this is the amplitude of the sound wave that's received, and it's plotted as a function of delay time, or delay here in seconds. This is essentially giving you how much noise the, sound, the phone is hearing after it transmits the pulse. The peak corresponds to when the phone has received the most sound from when the pulse was transmitted, and we'll learn how to measure the delay time precisely, but in this case we measure it at 0.004875 seconds. We will measure the speed of sound using a kinematic analysis. We note that the distance to the wall is actually half the total distance that the sound wave travels. It goes to the wall and then comes back again. And that total distance is just the speed of sound times the delay time between the, when the pulse is transmitted and when it's received. So the distance from the wall ends up being half of the speed of sound times the delay time. And we'll use this relationship in the context of a linear regression. What we'll do is we'll measure several different distances and delay times. Uh, we'll gather at least 10 separate data at four different distances. And if we plot the distance to the wall on the vertical axis and the delay time on the horizontal axis, we can then go ahead and carry out a linear fit where the slope of that line is going to be half the speed of sound. For this experiment, you will need a smartphone running the Firefox app and a flat surface such as a wall or ceiling. You will also need a method of measuring distances. If you don't have a ruler or a tape measure or something, you can search up printable rulers on the internet and print one off onto a sheet of paper. The first thing you will need to do is measure the distance from the wall, usually from the middle of the wall, to where you want to hold your smartphone. When you're there, you can go ahead and collect data. From there, you can go ahead and analyze it, as we'll show you in a minute. For the whole experiment, you will need to repeat this three times at different distances. You need to be about 70 centimeters or more from the wall for your phone to work well. To collect data for the sonar experiment, go ahead and open the Firefox app on your phone. This will give you several different experiments that you could do with your phone's sensors. We will want to select Sonar. In Sonar, we have several different modes, and we want to choose Timing. With this, we are ready to collect data, focusing on the top graph, which will plot the amplitude of signal versus the delay time. When we're ready to collect data, we'll point it towards a flat wall and press the Play button. Once a clear spike emerges, we will press the Pause button. Here we are going to examine that first clear spike that we see. If you click on the top graph, you can zoom in, then you use your fingers to pan and zoom and in on the data. Go ahead and select the Pick Data button to choose the data at the top. This will give you the X and Y values of that coordinate. We can go ahead and select that data, 
and use that in our use that in our analysis. Here we would have a delay time of 0 0.005 seconds. You will then go ahead and use this data point for the delay time and the distance that you measured as one of your 10 data that you need for this lab. You can then go ahead and repeat this at at least four different distances. For the analysis in this lab, I've entered my data into a spreadsheet. Here I estimate an error of 3 centimeters in my distance, which is owing to my terrible tape measure skills, and I have truncated the entries for the time to three significant figures, since we aren't going to worry about uh, the detailed collection of error values for those. To carry out the uh, basic plotting, I'll just go ahead and insert my chart uh, here gives me uh, what I want, uh, with the exception of I want time on the x-axis and distance on the y-axis. And then you can change the axes and values so you get the uh, properly formatted graph and insert a linear trend line, and you'll be largely complete. For the statistical analysis, as always, we will use Linest, and we will want to plot our y-values of distance as a function of time, fitting both the intercept and the uh, slope. And here I get a slope value of 160. The units here are meters per second, and I'm going to multiply this value by 2 to get my estimate of the speed of sound. That is pretty good, range of 20 meters per second. And I'm going to multiply the second value by 2 to get my estimate of the error. So overall, I'm measuring an estimate of the speed of sound that is 320 meters per second, plus or minus, rounding the error to one significant digit rounds it to 20. So this is my final answer. It's 320 plus or minus 20 meters per second, and I can see that my error is going to include uh, the actual speed of sound at about 340 meters per second uh, within one and a bit error intervals. So I have reasonably good agreement between the theoretical and experimental values here.